Hey guys, Sean C. Phillips here, the brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. They're going to go out today, see what things came out, see what things are on sale. Today though, some of the big releases that come out are Creed 2, and I know uh, Best Buy has an exclusive steelbook of that one. Also the film The Favorite comes out today, as well as Instant Family. And since the first Tuesday of the month, Walmart changes out the actual section and gets you in a whole bunch of brand new uh, DVDs and Blu-rays and like, you know, some new horror films and comedies and all kinds of different stuff. So definitely look forward to seeing, you know, what Walmart changed out and got in today. But one really, really cool thing that releases today is the horror film Dead Ant, which I have a really fun uh, cameo death scene in. That one comes out today on DVD and Blu-ray, and it's basically though about a group of this band that was kind of popular in the 80s and had like one hit song, and they're going to a Coachella-type festival, and they're kind of them getting back together for their kind of comeback. But along the way, they end up, you know, buying this peyote, and they're told though, if they, you know, end up harming any type of animal or anything whatsoever, you know, it would become a terrible thing for them. And of course, one of the characters ends up killing an ant and then the ants come after them and it's like the band getting chased down by these crazy gigantic ants and it's just a really really fun movie but the one thing that's really cool though is uh, I, you know Cynodon the company that's releasing the film is going to be doing for my channel a giveaway so they said they're going to have five DVDs and five Blu-rays of the film for you know giveaway so if you guys are interested in winning a copy of the film on DVD or Blu-ray just make sure you subscribe to this channel you subscribe to my channel I'll give this video a thumbs up and then head over to my Instagram give the Instagram a follow and on today's post you know with the thumbnails today talking about today's video all you have to do is leave a comment that says you'd like to you know enter the contest to win a uh, DVD or a blu-ray and I'll pick the first you know five people first for blu-ray and then and then afterwards I'll do blu-ray you know for the DVDs like I said though just want to let you guys know about that contest also though at the end of this video is gonna be a whole bunch of brand new DVD and Blu-ray reviews for some new things I received to review and talk about for you guys some really really cool stuff so definitely stay tuned for those at the end of this video but anyway though guys let's get going and see what we can find today into Walmart we go and this Walmart's the one that usually has all the new stuff put out in the actual section, so fingers crossed all the things are out on the shelves. We shall see. And like I said, though, some of the big things that released today was uh, Creed 2. That was $29.96 uh, uh, for the 4K and $24.96 for the Blu-ray of that one. It has a different cover here on the DVD of that one. That one's $16.96. I believe this Royal Rumble, Re Royal Rumble uh, released today as well. And then other than that, like I said, uh, Instant Family came out today. That one's uh, uh, $19.96. I actually really like that one. Other than that, though, I believe Ben and Back, that one came out today. This is a really, you know, really, really well done, but very sad film. Uh, other than that, though, this one here, Condor, uh, season one. I don't know what that one was. It says it's like an audience network show, as well as um, Va The Vanishing came out. That one's only $14.96 for the, um, the Blu-ray of that one. And then The Trump Prophecy, I believe, was today. And then this one here, I don't know what this Kit Harrington movie with Liv Tyler, uh, Gunpowder. If you guys have seen this though, let me know how this one was. And there's also this thing here called uh, Little Miss Doolittle, which like it's like sort of like a Doctor Doolittle kind of movie thing here. That one's a uh, $14.96 for that, and they have the favorite down here as well for a uh, $19.96. Now in here today, some of the new things today is I think this one, Guard Dog, I believe that one may have released today, as well as this one, um, If You're Gone, You're Gone. I don't know for sure if like the Good Samaritan, the Unlikely Good Samaritan released today, or uh, Love on Safari. I believe though some of these ones were last uh, month, like an interview with God. I think this Dean Kane one may have been today, uh, Winter's Dream here. Let's see any other new ones. This is one of the ones that I know came out today. And I know there's a Blu-ray this one as well, this Vox Lux starring Natalie Portman and Jude Law. This is one, I've seen like pictures of this online. It looked really interesting. I haven't like seen a trailer or anything. If you guys have seen this particular movie though, let me know how this one was, if that's one I should pick up or not. Because it lo does look interesting. Other than that though, let's see any other ones that are new today. This one might have been today, Point Man. I'm not 100% sure though, but some of the ones that I do know that are new for sure was this this one, uh, Darkness Reigns, which stars Casper Van Dien. I really like this movie. This is a movie about these guys making this horror movie in this old, like, abandoned, uh, like, kind of like a hotel kind of place. And then, like, they end up conjuring up the demon. And, like, it's like, it's all done, found footage, and they're all, like, getting killed off and trapped in there. Uh, this one, Maglodon, this one released today. This is $9.99 for that. This is a new Asylum shark film. 
But one thing that's really cool is they do have Dan Anton here. It's $9.96 for that one. So that's so cool to see this one in store. I believe they only have the DVD of it, but that's so cool to see that one in here. This one's empty here, this spot, miles from nowhere. So I'm not sure what was um, gonna be, what that one was. And this one here, this Rumor Willis movie came out today, uh, What Lies Ahead. Another one looks kind of interesting. Don't know too much about that. Other than that in here, new wise. Uh, this one here, The Devil's Restaurant, released today here. And this one has two feature films on it, two bonus films, toe tags, and I think serial killer, or how to be a serial killer. Other than that though, that seems to be all the major new things over here today. Into Best Buy we go. And yeah, I know I'm going to the stores real out of order today, but I was looking online and it looks like Best Buy has it, you know, the dead ant in store, so I'd love to see it in store, but it says like only one copy available. Sometimes when it says that, that means there's actually a few more than that, but they like list only as one. Some I, I remember hearing about that in the past. Also though, in that Walmart I was last in, you know, sir, I couldn't talk too much when I was showing the stuff. There was like six people in the section all around me when I was doing it. I still talked about everything anyway, but they were all like, looking at me real odd but yeah there's a lot of people in that Walmart yeah in here though in the front though I don't see I see you know the Creed 4k and the standard blu-ray but the steelbook it's 34.99 I don't see any more of them left here they do have the favorite uh, for 14.99 on uh, DVD and 19.99 on blu-ray I'm gonna be talking about this one at the end of this video but really really love this movie this is such a great movie it's like a really out there movie as well they still have one of the uh, stars born 4k steelbooks here like I said though I really want to try and find the um, dead ant in here and I don't know if it would be here in the front or in the actual section I feel like it would probably be in the section like I said it was showing only one available they do have this Vox Lux here for $22.99 on Blu-ray like I said I really don't know much about this so if you guys have seen this let me know if this one that I should pick up or not also they have the vanishing here for $14.99 uh, this is another thing that came out today the complete fourth season of Fear the Walking Dead I'm gonna be reviewing this one at the end of this video as well as I'll be talking more about the favor at the end of this video as well but they actually have one of these uh, steelbooks the other location last week didn't have any more of these in the Captain America uh, Best Buy exclusive uh, 4k steelbook that one's $34.99 but let's head over to the actual section though and see if they have dead ant over there yeah I was looking all around the section it's actually right in the very front I don't know what I was doing I was like looking around I don't know if I showed it in the first take or not I just totally missed seeing it yeah but it's right in the front of the store $11.99 for the blue of that one so cool to see this one for sale in here and in the front of the store like that I thought it was gonna be in the actual section I went over to the actual section though and they had over there um, you know uh, you know instant family as well but I didn't see any of the uh, street steelbooks over there either so they were totally out of the 4k steelbook so those ones went really quick but like I said so cool to see this one in here in the front as well yeah but that was definitely so cool to see that though in the front of the store like that I think this is like trying to think back to any time I can remember Best Buy carrying anything that I was ever in. I remember they carried Girls Gone Dead when that one uh, first came out. Then there was all kind of controversy about the cover, so it didn't last in there more than like a week or so. And I think they had in there a Night of the Living Deb. I think so. Other than that, I can't remember anything else in there, but still, I don't think I've ever had anything in the very front of the store like that. So let me know if in your Best Buys, if the movie's in the front of the store like that as well. But I can't believe, too, I just totally overlooked it and was like standing right in front of it the whole time and then went in the actual section like a real fool and kept looking and looking and looking. But just, like I said, so cool to see that. And I actually went over to another Walmart since I had a hard time like really showing too well in the other one because there was so much stuff going on in that section. And I do see like one or two different things in here that the other one didn't have, like this one, 40 and single uh, the complete first season here uh, when when it comes around I don't believe I saw that in the other store as well as this one here uh, safe house the crow some like uh, BBC series here other than that though that seems oh yeah and then the burning a uh, burning that was one of the other ones I didn't see at the other location but yeah and they have in here as well um, Dead Ant down here as well for $9.99. And this is, oh yeah, this is one of the only other things I didn't see. This foreign exchange student, everyone keeps dying. This is one of the only other ones. So in there I ended up getting that Devil's Restaurant one. I don't know, that kind of looked interesting. It's only $9.99. Like I said, it had those two bonus movies. I was going to get it in the first Walmart, but I was so like, uh, you know, discombobulated in there with all those people everywhere. I couldn't like get a thumbnail or anything in it. But I did in this one though. But yes, yeah, so like I said, I got this one in here though. 
And this past weekend, I saw a couple of different films. The first one I saw was Tyler Perry's A Medea Family Funeral, which is, you know, said to be the very last time we're ever going to see Medea again, that he's going to be retiring the character, and that's it for that character. I really do wonder, though, if that's totally true, if, you know, it'll be like a couple years from now, like five years from now or so, and then Medea will be back. You know, but the thing is, if he does never do Medea again, I really hope he still does, like, some wacky, crazy characters, because that's the stuff I love is when he does these over-the-top type characters and everything. But this one kind of deals with the family getting together, Medea getting to coming to see the family for like like this certain type of um an event, but then there ends up being this death at the very beginning of this event. The thing that's funny though about this one specifically is like the stuff that's going on with Medea and like Joe and everything, those characters and everything is so crazy. Medea's saying these insane things and it's so over the top. And then there's like this heavy drama family, like a soap opera kind of stuff going on. And so often like the Medea, like the family and everything isn't like reacting much to what Medea is saying. And it's almost like, you know, Medea, you know, almost like only the audience can see Medea, but like the family family is not acknowledging it or acknowledging what like insanity is being said around them but I still thought it was a fun movie it wasn't absolutely perfect or like my favorite of the Medea films I still did like it the other one I saw was the film uh, Greta which stars uh, Chloe Grace Moritz and it's from the same director as who did you know uh, The Crying Game which is another really great movie but Greta though highly recommend you guys check that one out that's basically about Chloe Grace's character moves you know she's new to the city and she doesn't know much about kind of the things you, that you don't do in the city and she ends up finding this purse that was left on the subway and she ends up taking it to the owner's house and like you know she gets there and starts starts talking to the woman and little by little she's realizing though that this wasn't a great thing and this character her you know is very crazy and like stalkerish and it becomes like this crazy nightmare of a situation for Chloe Grace's character and it kind of like gets worse and worse and worse as the movie goes along but that one I would highly recommend you guys check out let me know in the comments below though what you guys saw this past weekend or if you guys saw either the the two films I saw this past weekend. Into Target we go. Here though, they don't, it doesn't look like they have any exclusive editions of Creed though. They do have a different cover here on their cover of Creed than they did at Walmart. This one has like a bonus disc in, in that one. They have the favorite here as well for $19.99. Uh, ben is back for $19.99 as well, as well as the Vanishing here. But I don't see uh, Dead Ant in here. I wasn't sure if they would have it or not, but still so cool to see that in Best Buy and in Walmart. These are all on sale again. And like these are down I think I think they were both ten dollars a couple days ago but season one's now for ten dollars for that one yeah now this one here is 20 and like I said I think they were a little cheaper a little while ago or and but one of the other things I don't think I showed anywhere that came out today was Krypton I'm gonna be reviewing the blu-ray of this one at the end of this video that one's on $19.99 for that one but other than that though that's all the different things in here that I'm seeing today it's also a different cover here on the uh, DVD release of Fear of the Walking Dead that one's uh, $22.99 for the DVD and $27.99 for the uh, Blu-ray of that. Yeah, see in the front of the store it actually says Season 2 here for $10. So I think it is uh, $10 for Season 2 of this one as well. At least for the Blu-ray uh, Blu edition, not the 4K though. But yeah, well, I, I did think they were both $10. So anywhere though guys, that's off my DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. In the comments below though, let me know you know what DVDs or Blu-rays you guys picked up. If you guys picked up anything today. Also let me know as well you know what you guys thought of Dead End. If you guys get to check out the movie as well as let me know what you guys thought of the brand new dvds and blu-rays that i'm reviewing at the end of this video but thanks so much guys for all your support now stay tuned for the new reviews now before we get to the reviews fye sent over some brand new fye exclusive steelbook releases these ones you guys can get in their stores as well as on their website and it's three brand new ones uh, the first one here is the edgar wright film you know starring michael Sierra and mary elizabeth winstead and this is uh, scott pilgrim versus the world it's a really really cool image on this one this is one of the films though came out in 2010 and somehow I totally missed this movie. I never have never seen this movie. I don't know how I never watched this. I'm definitely going to finally watch this one. But a really cool steelbook for this one. Uh, the other one here, and this is a movie I always really liked. I remember watching this one as a kid. They're still making sequels to this to this day. And this is uh, Tremors. And it's another one, like I said, I always really liked this one. I remember when I was a kid watching this one. Like, I watched this one so many times. I thought, like, the sequels, like, um, 
some of them were better than others. Like, the most recent one I actually thought was relatively decent. You know, Jamie Kennedy's been in the last two sequels. But really, really cool image. And this in here, too, is the um, original poster artwork for this one. I always really liked the original poster image. And then the last steelbook here is uh, the Edgar Wright film as well, uh, Shaun of the Dead. And there's been some other steelbooks of this one in the past. But um, this one is actually a really, really different image on this one. I've never seen this one. And it has a, kind of like a throwback look with this image to like Dawn of the Dead a little bit. You know, with the coloring and stuff on the zombies. And then this image here on the back of Sean. You know, and this um, as well, here's a look inside. But really, really fun zombie parody film. And it's like, you know, stars Nick Frost and Simon Pegg. And those two are always really, really great together. They also were in, you know, um, Hot Fuzz together. But really, really fun movie and really, really cool exclusive steelbook for this one. Now on to the reviews, though. The first one here is from Arrow Video. And it's a Jallo film. This is from 1975. And it's called uh, Strip Nude for Your Killer. And I covered one thing up just in case no one says anything. But nothing really bad or anything but um this movie though is basically though about in the beginning of this movie this woman is in goes for this abortion and she ends up dying at you know from the abortion and they kind of cover up what had happened and everything and essentially though this girl was a model and she was at this model academy and all kind of like in the fashion industry and that kind of stuff and like it, people who are like connected to this girl who died are all getting killed off one by one by this motorcycle guy wearing kind of like a motorcycle suit and a motorcycle helmet uh, I feel like this movie inspired um, um, there was a movie called, I think it was Night School. I think that was the one where the character was wearing a similar type of wardrobe, I believe. And there might have been another Jallo film as well, where there was a character wearing like a motorcycle helmet and stuff. I, th I think that, I th I'm pretty sure about that. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe I remembered something else like that as well. But essentially though, it's kind of a whodunit of trying to figure out exactly who is, you know, going around, you know, killing these, uh, the people connected to this girl off. And it's also really, really, really cool music in this. I absolutely love the music music on this one. This one has on here though a brand new 2K restoration. Looks really really good on here and it has the Italian language version as well as the uh, English language version on this. It has on here though a bunch of different uh, new interviews on here. Interview on here with assistant director on here and an interview on here with uh, with actor and production design uh, production manager Tino Palagioni. I'm not, I know I'm saying the name incorrect. Uh, image gallery on here. Uh, uh, original Italian and English theatrical trailers. Has a commentary track on here with um, Adam J. Smith from horrorpedia.com. Uh, so lots and lots of features on this one. Uh, the next one here, though, is from uh, Scream Factory. This is another movie that I, I remember watching this one so much when this one first came out. I always really liked this movie. It's a movie here called, from uh, uh, Shout Factory, Scream Factory line. This is The Craft. And I love the new image on this one. It also has the original, uh, you can reverse the image on, you know, for the original poster image. This is essentially, though, about uh, Robin, Tur Tooney, T Robin Tooney's character who, um, you know, went, you know, goes, to, basically, she always kind of noticed that she kind of had, like, these sort of abilities, like, you know, sort of kind of noticing something that she had something that she could kind of control things and essentially though she goes to this brand new school which is this Catholic school and there's three girls there who are kind of like the outcast of the school and like people are all there kind of talking about them and like saying oh yeah don't you don't want to mess with them when, they, when she's getting introduced around the school she's like oh you don't want to talk to them though they're witches and stuff and you know they're you know it's just you don't want anything to do with them of course though these girls though are messing around with witchcraft and like trying to conjure things up and everything. Of course, though, uh, Nev Campbell's character, who's one of the, the girls in the group who's the witches, notices, though, Robin uh, Tertuni's character kind of controlling this pencil, like, and kind of having it stand up and everything on its own. So she's like, we've got to bring her into our group, and we can probably, like, maybe if she's there, we can finally, like, get these spells to work and, you know, actually, like, be successful with what we're doing. Of course, though, they bring her into the group, and then they start to like conjure things up and things start to work. And it's kind of about them like, you know, controlling things and really messing with people, doing some bad things to people, kind of fixing things with themselves and all that kind of stuff. But things kind of go in like really crazy directions with, you know, Fruza Balk's character with what's going on. Like I said, I always really like this movie. You know, it's just a really, really cool film. And it has on here, though, uh, brand new interviews on here with uh, the director and co-writer Andrew Fleming, as well as the producer on this one, the co-writer, uh, Makeup Effect. 
effects su supervisor on this one. It has a uh, archival commentary on here with the director conjuring the craft featurette, uh, the making of the craft, uh, deleted scenes with optional commentary as well as a theatrical trailer on this one. But one I would definitely recommend if you guys have never seen this movie. Just a really, really fun, you know, kind of witchcraft movie. And like I said, one of those ones I've watched so many times throughout the years. The next one here is a movie starring uh, Lance Henriksen called uh, Man's Best Friend. This is a kind of a crazed killer dog movie. Kind of like um, around this time too, they did one called like an another dog movie called like Toxic Dog or Toxic, something like that. I can't remember what it was, but it had like a similar, around the same time as this. But of course though, this was like inspired by like Cujo. This isn't exactly like Cujo because this one, Cujo didn't have a whole lot of explanation for like this dog. It was kind of like this, this dog that was kind of being abused and everything. And like, you know, this dog though was a dog that was, you know, because this so this dog actually has like stuff that was done to it like in a medical facility where like they were doing like genetic testings and things like that on this and essentially though this is about um Ali Sheedy's character who is um kind of a she's a reporter for the news and she's kind of trying to get bigger cases and things like that and she kind of doesn't get any big stories and she ends up you know hearing from someone who works at this lab that there's some weird stuff going on with these animals and these testings going on and the woman says oh you know I'll, I'll let you come in at night and film and everything but you have to pay me and everything of course though she goes there and of course something happens and this woman right at the very beginning gets killed and she goes in there to, to like investigate Alex Sheedy's character and um, you know to investigate and everything and then when she goes in there it's basically though this dog is like loose in there and she like you know this big dog that these genetic testings were done on and she's like oh I can't leave this dog and um, you know I, I, she ends up taking the dog home with her and of course though it's not a good thing and this dog is kind of like super protective and also is kind of acting like you know because right to that same time this dog like protects them from like uh, protects her from this guy who's trying to rob her right after they take the dog you know out of this place and she notices like this dog is like super smart and everything but she's noticing things are kind of off and Lance Henderson's character is in this is the doctor who you know finds out the dog was taken and he's like going to do anything he can to try and track down the dog and figure out where the dog is it's just a really fun like crazy dog movie I don't know I always like these kind of movies and this is like I said another one that I saw years back I remember watching this one a whole lot as well in this one I think I, I was like renting this one a lot on like DVD but this one has on here though a 2k scan from the original film elements on this one it has a new commentary track on here with the director as well as the, the writer and director on this one as well as the theatrical trailer but looks really really good as well this is one um um, from uh, Shout Factory, Shout Select Line, which I never actually saw this movie, and it's um you know it's directed by Ridley Scott, and it's a movie, Ridley Scott film that I don't feel like you hear about too often, um you know starring uh, Tom Berger, Ber Berninger and uh, Mimi Rogers. And this is um someone to watch over me, and I I didn't um. I think that they filmed this one part in the Queen Mary, but I might be totally wrong, but it really looked like the Queen Mary's like the pool in the Queen Mary. I might be totally wrong about that, but it was really looking like that. Cause I, I, you know, um, went on the tour of that a couple of different times and like it always creeps me out that that part and I'm like it kind of looks like that and I think it might be if anybody knows for sure though let, let me know in the comments but essentially though this is about um Mimi Rogers character who is at this party this like kind of like she's like um kind of a socialite and like has like a lot of money and things like that so she's at this really like ritzy big party and everything but if, if she goes there and she ends up witnessing this bad guy end up killing this guy and she's like sees it and then the guy like sees her and he tries to chase after her and she ends up getting away in this elevator but he you know she can totally identify who this is she like knows you know she's pretty sure she knows who this person is and of course though the cop played by Tom Berninger he basically is um Hopefully I'm saying his name, but Tom Burt, Banninger, Banninger. I think I'm saying, I think I might be saying the name incorrect though, but essentially though, he's this cop who's just kind of, you know, switched over to a new kind of unit that he's working at this new place. And he's like kind of big on duty of um, watching her, Mimi Rogers character and kind of keeping her, you know, protecting her and like, um, and it's sort of like he's going and kind of following her around and he's never really been in these kind of situations that she's in because she's like I said she goes to these really richy kind of parties and like also though you know he's kind of is starting to kind of like her a little bit so there's kind of this stuff going on between them and also his girlfriend though is kind of like you know 
wondering about what is going on and stuff because of the way he's acting and stuff and he's always kind of with this woman Mimi Rogers character and kind of watching her and kind of like obsessing a little bit it's actually a very very interesting movie though it has on here though uh, new interviews on here with the writer as was well a new interview with the director of photography on this one and the next one I got here is from Lions Gate and this is a uh, Fear the Walking Dead the complete fourth season here on Blu-ray I will say though I have not seen all the episodes you know of Fear the Walking Dead or the Walking Dead I've only seen episodes here and there so I don't know all the characters or anything in it. I will say though, this this season did a really interesting sh you know thing with it though. Essentially though, the one character here who is from The Walking Dead, he ends up you know leaving that show and coming into this show, into this show's world. And essentially though, he's living out in the, the first episode out in this junkyard and kind of isolated, and he left the characters that he was with you know in The Walking Dead show. And now he's living on his own, kind of isolated and everything. And he's kind of seeing them come, coming to him and talking to him. And he's kind of having visions of them. And he kind of decides he wants to kind of move on and try and find somewhere else. And essentially, though, he ends up connecting with characters, you know, the characters who are from the Fear of the Walking Dead world. And they're kind of like asking him things like about like what he saw. And he doesn't really want to be there, though. He really wants to just kind of be left on his own and kind of doesn't really want to be involved with anybody. But he kind of ends up being brought into their group and then kind of like, telling them about what he saw in the areas where he was, where he came from, and they're kind of telling him about the things that they witnessed and stuff. It's it's a really interesting, you know, kind of way of like kind of bringing the two shows together. And I thought it was actually a really interesting thing that they did with this. Also, though, the new season of um, Fear the Walking Dead is coming uh, this summer. But on here, though, this has uh, audio commentaries on this one. It also includes the digital versions of the show. The next one here is from Lionsgate as well. It's a movie here called uh, AI Rising. This was interesting. Interesting. This was basically though a like a futuristic film. It's and it's basically though about this guy who's like he usually gets sent out to like space to do like kind of like kind of retrieve certain things or find certain things. But he normally goes by himself. But the he he basically goes on this mission and they say, oh no, you, this time around you have to have a companion. You have to have someone with you. You have to have a woman go with you. And they send him to with this cyborg woman who's like super you know kind of like the most futuristic cyborg that you wouldn't even know is a cyborg. Like it's the most human you could imagine. And essentially, though, it's like he gets sent up there and then like after, I think, like a month or so on his own on this mission that, he has, that he's on, she ends up being turned on and woken up. And he kind of, it's interesting, though, because like he has this kind of device so he can kind of control things with her so he can be like, oh, you do this. And, you know, he can control her mood. And so she's like, oh, you're, oh, you're in a happy mood or, oh, you want to sleep with me now. Or, you, you know, he can basically like, you know, do it as he wishes. But there's some interesting stuff going on because he's kind of like you find this out very early on that, you know, the mission, there is a mission, but also he's kind of there, too, to kind of um, be watched as well with how he is re interacting with you know this cyborg woman and like he like she's kind of reporting what he, how he acts and what he does but he's also up there though trying to you know see what he if he can kind of like put away the device that kind of controls this cyborg and kind of like talk to her and like actually have her do things on her own free will it's a very very interesting kind of like trippy out there movie with what's going on and like the way it's shot and everything and it's got a lot of effects and everything I thought it was actually really really well done kind of has a feel a little bit of like X Machima kind of has that vibe a little bit. This has on here though behind the scenes. It has deleted scenes. Uh, interview on here with the uh, the main actress on this one as well as a trailer gallery on this. And the next one here is from Lionsgate as well. It's a movie starring Hayden Christensen, Hayden Christensen and uh, Harvey Keitel. This is called The Last Man. And this is basically though about Hayden Christensen's character who is um this is like a, another futuristic film and it's essentially though he you know is uh, you know came back from war and he's had a lot of like um you know flashbacks from it and having kind of a hard time kind of adapting to what he had saw and what he went through and he's doing like the best he can and trying to kind of you know figure out what he's going to do and um trying to figure out how he's going to get you know trying to work and get a job and everything but at the same time though he's kind of convinced you know because this is like the world is kind of falling apart and like there's 
things are not great or anything. And like he's, he's like describing how like, you know, people are like the everything they're about this war that had happened and like all these things that have happened and like these bad things and all this kind of stuff. He's kind of explaining all that. And he's kind of become convinced that the world is going to end very soon. And Harvey Keitel's character plays this kind of like preacher character who has like written a book about how like how to survive the end of times. And he kind of starts talking to Hayden Christensen's character and telling him things and saying, this is what you've got to do and you've got to do this. And Hayden Christensen's character starts working for this like security company and like taking the money and trying to build like, you know, this, um, underground bunker and it's kind of like um all this kind of craziness that's going on about him like talking about this and talking to Harvey, Harvey Keitel's character about like the end of times and you know if if you know he's kind of imagining all this or if this is really happening and it's actually very very interesting like you know all this stuff that's going on on here but really pretty interesting and you know I thought uh, Hayden Christensen and Harvey Keitel did a good job in this one as well now the next one here is from Universal this one I really love this movie this you know one uh, best picture and you know um, uh, Mahershala, Mahershala Ali, you know, won uh, Best Supporting Actor for this film. And this is the film uh, Green Book, which is uh, directed by uh, Peter Farley, which is the first movie that Peter Farley did, uh, you know, solo without his brother Bobby Farley. Because, you know, uh, Peter Farley and Bobby Farley were best known, you know, as the Farley brothers. And they did, like, you know, Dumb and Dumber and Kingpin and this song about Mary, Me, Myself, and Irene. Like, I, I've loved every single movie that they've ever done. And this, like I said, this is the first movie that, you know, um, you know, uh, Peter Farley has done on his own and um and it's like such a different kind of movie for him and I thought he did an absolutely amazing job the performance in this movie were absolutely amazing essentially though it's about Viggo Morgensen's character who is this kind of like he's like a bouncer at this club and the club has been shut down for a while they're kind of remodeling it and he you know is out of work and he doesn't know what he's going to do he, he you know he has like he's basically the only person who's paying the rent and you know they really are relying on his, his family is relying on his money to coming in and everything and he's like thinking is what is he going to have to do you know to do this and he kind of ends up finding out about this job position as being a driver for Mahersha Ali's out character who is this um musician and um you know he's like this musician prodigy piano player who is like a, like a, absolutely amazing and but this is all set in the 60s though at the time when there's like um a lot of really terrible like um you know people are really prejudiced about you know they're racists and all that kind of stuff is going on and like you know you can't you know if you're african american you have to have go in your own bathroom and you have to go stay in your own hotel and that's what the green book title comes from is if you're tra like a guidebook for if you're african american traveling down south and some of, some of the southern states, like, you know, what restaurants you can go to and what hotels you can stay at and, you know, where to avoid and everything. And that's, you know, where the title came from. And essentially, though, Viggo Mortensen's character has been hired to drive him, uh, you know, to his concert dates in the deep south and these areas where there's a lot of racism and things like that going on and he's kind of there to drive him and also to kind of protect him as well. And it's a road movie that, you know, is about them and like kind of like how their their friendship builds from this and the kind of stuff that they go through it's a very very emotional movie it's one of those movies i cried like quite a bit to some of the stuff in this honestly i but it was like the performance wise this was absolutely amazing like i said i, I was so like just loved what peter farley did with this and it was so cool to see him do something so different that like so totally different than he's ever done before and he did an amazing job this has on here though um some featurettes on the film here as well and talking about you know the true you know about the friendship because this was all based on a true story as well but definitely one I recommend you guys check out and the next one I got here is from Fox and it's the film The Favorite which was up for a best picture nomination as well as Olivia Coleman won for best actress in the film and Emma Stone and Rachel Weisz were both up for best supporting actress in the movie and I love this movie this is one of my picks of my favorite films of 2018 and it's a really really quirky kind of film it's from the director of um, The Killing of a Sacred Deer if you know his movies they're really out there and like really like the crazy kind of concepts and everything I really love his films and this one too kind of has the vibe a little bit of the film Amadeus that kind of feel and I love the way it's shot there's all these kind of interesting kind of angles and like they're using interesting lenses and like the look of everything just everything the way this whole is all put together is such a cool like I said out there film and essentially though it's about this queen played by Oliver Coleman and essentially though 
she has this relationship with Rachel Weiss's character, and you know they're kind of like together, but it's kind of a secret thing. And um, Emma Stone's character comes to the castle to kind of work there as like a maid in like in, in the in the building, but she's like you know related to um, Rachel Weiss's character. And Emma Stone's character, you know, originally came from money, and like basically her family lost all their money, and like she's kind of having to start all over again. And as soon as she gets there, she has to try and figure out how she's going to kind of get close to the queen and she really like her goal is to like figure out how to kind of instead of like being like the maid and sleeping in these terrible conditions and you know she wants to try and figure out how to, way to kind of work her way up and end up being with the queen and to kind of do whatever it takes to kind of you know take the place of you know Rachel Weiss's character and it, like I said it is a great movie I absolutely love this I love the music in this movie all I know there's just like everything about this is such a great movie and it's not like the typical kind of like period piece where it like like I said it plays out real straight laced or anything there is some really quirky out there stuff that goes on in this movie all around though highly recommend you guys check this out if you guys have not seen this one absolutely a must watch it has on here though deleted scenes as well as a featurette on here and the next one here is from uh, Code Red Entertainment you guys can order this one exclusively from Dark Force Entertainment I have a link below for their website you also can check their Facebook as well to find out you know when their the website's open again to you know to order this one this is an anthology film here called Screams of a Winter's Night, which is one I had never seen before, and it's one I was really, really interested in seeing. I always really, really love anthology films, and always love anthology films that are kind of crazy and over the top and kind of like super wacky kind of ones. And the thing that's fun about this one is it's about a group of people, and, and like all the people who are telling the story, they all kind of end up in the sh in the segments that they're telling. So it like kind of cuts to the segments, and some of them are in them, or they're always in them. But it's like you know sometimes the one guy's in like two of different segments and it's like kind of funny and like what I love as well is like except for the one segment like most of them kind of look like they're all filmed in the same vicinity like in the same woods area and like you kind of be like oh yeah over there is this house and over there is where the cemetery is it's kind of like they just kind of moved around this small little area they were shooting at except for one of the segments and it's basically though about um group of these friends who are going kind of getting together to go to this cabin and they're in there telling stories and stuff and it's not like the typical one where it's like they're outside at a campfire telling the stories you know they're actually inside sitting in front of the fire you know telling these stories and it's like they're having all kind of drama too with each other because like one sleep like seeing one person and then like they're like cheating on somebody so they're having all kind of like drama kind of problems going on as well so it kind of cuts back to like the story and then like them having some kind of drama and problems with each other but it's a really really fun movie and the thing that's cool about this release is you know um this was originally released it was cut down it had four segments originally and it was cut down to only three and so it was only not only 90 minutes long this one includes the original theatrical cut which is 90 minutes and also includes the uh extended cut which is the one that includes the fourth segment so it's an extra 30 minutes longer so really really cool that they included that on here and it has on here a brand new 2k scan of the original 60 millimeter uh negative on this one it has on here like i said the original uncut uh director's edition with the last you know fourth story on this one uh, bonus theatrical cut and on-camera interviews with the star Gil Glasgow as well as a trailer on this one but just a really really uh, fun movie a fun anthology film highly recommend you guys check this out if you guys like anthology horror films the next one here is from uh, Samuel uh, Goldwyn films and it's a movie here which I've always really loved this movie I had not seen this movie in years and I don't think I had ever actually seen the uncensored version of this because this was released you know years back on DVD in an R-rated cut and an uncensored cut and I ended up not unknown getting the R-rated cut. I didn't even know about the uncensored or anything. And it was so, the R-rated cut was so bleeped and so blurred out and covered over. It was like a disaster watching that. But this is a movie here called Spun. And I'm so glad the Blu-ray is the uncut edition of this movie. This is an amazing film. Really great cast in here. It's like got John Lugazamo, Mina Savarni, uh, Brittany Murphy is in here, Mickey Rourke, uh, Jason Schwartzman. Uh, Josh Peck has a little t like quick cameo in here. Um, you know, Eric Roberts is in this movie. Uh, essentially, though, this is about Jason Schwartzman's character who's going to uh, John Leguizamo's house to um, buy, uh, you know, speed and buy drugs and everything. And like when he's over there, though, he ends up meeting Brittany Murphy and he starts kind of talking to her and everything. 
Mickey Rory, uh, you know, uh, uh, Brittany Murphy's character is kind of desperate to find a ride to, to, to like, drive around and everything because her boyfriend, played by Mickey Rourke, is like cooking up drugs and stuff in this motel and he always needs to get supplies, needs to get to places and everything. And she's like, oh, um, I think we have someone who can drive us around. I think we finally have a ride and stuff. And this guy can take us places and, you know, he can get us things that we need to get to and everything. And essentially, though, Jason Schwartzman kind of gets roped into being like the driver and going around to get things. And it's kind of about all the things that they come across and the people they come across and these crazy like drug kind of stuff going on because they're all like on drugs the whole time and they're like going crazy and haven't slept for days and Brittany Murphy though is so great in this movie I'm, I was always such a huge fan of Brittany Murphy and like I always loved everything that she did you know and she just did such a great job in this movie you know, everybody did a really good job in this movie. One of these ones, though, like I said, so glad that, you know, that this was released on Blu-ray and it's the uncensored version. Has on here, though, deleted scenes, music video, uh, trailers on this one. Uh, I really look forward to seeing the director's newest film, too, with uh, Lords of Chaos, which I don't know when it's coming to Blu-ray, though. I, it was supposed to come out and then, like, it, and the date got changed or something. And the next one here is from Warner Brothers. They sent over a free copy of this one to let you guys know that this is available. This is a film here in the Wizarding World series, you know, in the Harry Potter universe. This is essentially the, um, you know, the prequel to the Harry Potter films and this is a uh, fantastic beast and the crimes of Grinwald and I don't want to say too much about this without like because I don't want to ruin anything about the last movie in case you guys didn't see this so essentially though I'll say that it's basically though Eddie Raymond's character who is having to track down um you know um Johnny Depp's character who's like um, kind of like this super villain in this and like sort of pe some people really like like him and like kind of follow everything that he's saying and like are kind of like his followers and it's also dealing with um, Ezra Miller's character who is like um, has all these types of weird abilities and essentially but essentially though um Eddie Raymond's character has to try and uh, find and track down Johnny Depp's character before he can like cause havoc, and um, it's kind of all the things that he goes on along the way to try and like stop him. And it's like I said, I, can't, I really can't say too much about this without you know ruining anything about the last one. And also uh, Dan Fogler, he's in the movie as well, and kind of along the mission for trying to help him and everything. This is a really really fun movie, and it's just, like I said, it's in the Harry Potter universe, so it kind of you see some characters that are still similar to ones like some of the creatures and stuff to the ones that you saw in Harry Potter that kind of look like them a little bit and you know you know, of course you know Dun the character of Dumbledore is in this one as a young younger character played by uh, Jude Law in this one but I don't know I think this is actually just a fun series of films uh, this also has on here though the uh, theatrical cut on the blu-ray and the 4k but then it has the extended cut which you guys can watch exclusively on on, on uh, streaming services so you guys can watch the streaming uh, you know the extended cut on streaming services and it has on here though a bunch of different featurettes on the film it has on here deleted scenes so lots and lots of features and 4k wise as well if you guys have 4k capacity highly recommend this one it's a very very like um atmospheric you know film it's all has like a lot of gloomy uh gr like grim lighting and everything which really benefits from the 4k which is the hdr which is all like, all, like i've kind of like talked about that a lot in the past but it's a big thing that you notice with 4k and the hdrs it's all about the contrast levels and you see much much darker darks and like um, levels to like the colors and everything and also all around the picture is just much much brighter and vibrant but you know really really cool film like I said if you guys are a fan of the, uh, the first Fantastic Beast film uh, Beast film, definitely check this one out next one here Warner Brothers sent our free copy of this one as well and this is a show that I believe this airs on Sci-Fi Channel and this is uh, Krypton this is the complete first season of uh, Krypton here and this is um, the um, this is basically um, the you know Superman's planet. And this is you know years before Superman was ever born, and it kind of shows what went on in this, on this planet, and kind of like the enemies that they were facing and everything. But essentially, though, this is about the one guy on there in here who is Superman's um, he's Superman's grandfather, and. Um, Essentially, though, this man comes from the future and says, "I'm warning you. I I need to tell you about that. You know this. You know that you need to keep this place safe and everything. And you have to do this because you know uh, your your grandson is going to be Superman, who is going to be this huge figure, and he's going to help all these people. And you know you need to do these certain things. And this guy's thinking like, is this kind of guy cry crazy? And essentially, though, uh, Superman's grandfather is in a stage where he's once they kind of want to bring him on to be like part of the group." there because like you know he he, you know, he kind of like would be going on where he would be like super powerful and kind of like in the top 
people that he'd be working with and you know one of this top level p people and he kind of is like at a point where though he doesn't know if he wants to go to this and he wants to do this and it's a little hard to explain but actually is a really pretty cool show and has some really cool characters and effects and stuff and like the set pieces and everything on this one are actually pretty interesting it has on here though uh, three featurettes bringing home world to life uh, I'll, uh a, a Lost Kingdom, Life on Krypton, a Krypton 2017 Comic-Con panel, deleted scenes, and a gag reel on this one. And the next one here is from RLJ Entertainment. It's a movie here called The Standoff at Sparrow Creek. This is essentially, though, a movie about these guys who are all in this militia, who are all, like, um, would be kind of called in if, like, a disaster happened, and they all have, like, combat training, and they have this huge artillery of weapons and all kinds of stuff, and um, they kind of, that's, like, kind of all, that it's, like, this whole group of them. But what ends up happening, though, in the beginning of this movie, there is this um, police funeral, and then all these people were shot. And the guys in this group all, all call each other together and to come in in this meeting. And they basically are saying, you know, we know that one of you here is involved in this. We know that one of you did this, and you, you know killed these people and it's essentially though them kind of locking them in themselves in this in this warehouse building where all their equipment is and all their stuff is and where they have their meetings and they're trying to get to the bottom of who is it who is the person there in their group that is you know involved in this who is the person that did this and it's kind of like this intense situation they go through of like questioning each other and like the way that things go and these, these crazy levels of them trying to get to the bottom of who was involved and who was it that did this and, and you know trying to figure this out before the police because they know the police are going to be coming there and looking and like looking at them and they want to kind of have it solved and resolved before the police are there so they can kind of turn over who it was that did it so they don't all you know get like brought down or something because of this but a really really interesting character piece here the next one here is from RLJ uh, Films as well it's a movie here called 100 Yards starring Sean Patrick Flannery you know who is I always think of from like the Boondock, Saint, the Boondock Saints films essentially though this is about this kid who is in the you know is in, in playing football and kind of in the, the stages of where he's about to become drafted into like the actual to a huge team and he's like right at this point but at the same time he's dealing with all these kind of problems though because his mother has you know went away to the Philippines and is totally gone missing and he is like trying to figure out where she is he can't get in touch with her whatsoever she's been gone all this time and he really cannot focus on this on anything and he's you know basically is getting you know taken into this team and going to be like going to this major team but he ends up leaving to go to the Philippines to try and track her down and figure out where she is and it's essentially though about him there and what he's going through and it kind of cuts back and forth to other times when he was like to, you know him getting to where he was and getting to like you know upper ranks of in the football world and kind of like getting to where he was about to be drafted and everything but a really interesting uh, character piece here all about what this kid was going through very emotional film as well here the next one here I want to let you guys know this one is available you guys can order this one on the chemical burns website right now it's also available for pre-order on Amazon I think it doesn't count on Amazon till April but right now you can get it on like I said on the chemical burns website it's a movie here called uh, toxic tutu which stars Mark Tugler you know who was the star of Toxic Avenger who played, you know, who's Melvin the Mop Boy in the original Toxic Avenger film. And this is actually a movie that I am in this movie. I filmed this movie right before I started losing weight. So this was like in, um, I think it was March 2014, and I started losing weight in June. So this is like it was in my absolute heaviest. This is basically, though, um, you know, uh, Mark's character, you know, you know, and kind of had gone missing for years, and no one really knew where he was. And this is kind of like the untold true story of his life, essentially. But it's like a parody, though. It's not like, you know, it's kind of like, well, could be, who knows? But essentially, though, it's like what happened to him and how maybe he, actually was exposed to real toxic chemicals and it's kind of about him like going to conventions and there's great footage of like um kind of comic con and mad monster party and all these different conventions and lloyd coffins in this movie just a really really fun movie and i'm part of the one like scene in the panel and i'm like without the movie in a couple of different scenes kind of judging things and talking about like my theories and everything with these group of these guys but you know really really fun movie like i said want to let you guys know that this one was available the next one's here i have a link where you guys can order these ones uh, for the best price, but they're from a website called Movie Zing. And this is uh, from one here that was from Freestyle uh, Releasing. 
It's a movie, uh, you know, starring Tom Everett Scott, who I always think of from like Dead Man on Campus and lots of different stuff. And it's a movie called I Hate Kids. It's about his character who wrote this book about how he, you know, hates children, never wants to have children, never wants to have anything to do with children. And he's about to get married, and his, you know, his fiance, she's kind of the same way. She doesn't want kids as well. But right at this, at this, um, you know, the, um, the, what was yes you'd say at the rehearsal dinner before they're getting married this kid shows up and says hey i i'm i'm your uh i'm your son and he's like what and it's like this guy who's a psychic who's like a really bad psychic and was like never really predicting anything but he's like no i i predicted this that i this came to me one day and and he's like has a radio show that's real popular of him like people calling in and like you know saying psychic facts and saying he's like oh yes i think you know, asking questions and he's like oh yes i think this will happen you should do this you know change do this and change this in your life and i predict this in your future but essentially though this guy predicted about this kid and you know his prediction was correct because they you know took a sample and it turns out that he is related and essentially though this kid doesn't care about having to see his father or anything he just wants them to track down the the mother and like who his mother is and this guy has no idea because like you know he had, had was with, with all these women back at this day when this kid would have been born or been been conceived so it's basically though about them all you know the uh, Tom Everett Scott and his son and the psychic all going around on this road trip trying to track down all the women that he had you know was with that could potentially be the mother and it's kind of this wacky uh, road movie and all these kind of problems they get into and him seeing these girls that he hasn't seen in years and it's just a really really fun movie um John Lannis was one of the producers of this movie. He has a little cameo in this movie as well, but I really like this one. I thought this was a very funny movie. This one is from Freestyle uh, releasing as well. It's a movie called Caskill Park. This is one I was really interested in seeing because Lauren Francesca, who I know is in this one, and um, she has a pretty big part in this one. She's like one of the main characters in this. And essentially, though, this is about a group of people going out on this camping trip. And of course, you know, anytime it's like, and it's all done found footage, and anytime people are going camping and stuff, it usually doesn't end up being a good thing. And it's like, oh, all done, like I said, found footage, and they're going out there. I end up starting like to hear weird things at night and like these weird sounds and everything. And Lauren Francesca's character is like pulled up into space, like this kind of light or something like pulls her up. And as soon as this happens, though bad things start to happen and like weird things are going on it's essentially though i'm them out there in the middle of the woods trying to figure out what's going on what is happening and like what, what are they going to do and how are they going to like survive all this stuff that's going on but like a really really crazy found footage movie uh the next one here is you can get a movie zing as well but this is um, a water archive release and this is a um the man from atlantis which stars patrick duffy you know who is from you know the show step by step and he's been a bunch of different stuff but this was actually a series, a TV series, and this has the pilot movie, which was the first episode of the series, and it's a 96-minute um, pilot movie on here released for the first time on Blu-ray. Looks really, really good on Blu-ray. And this, um, you know, Hanna-Barbera was the company that was behind producing this. You know, it's a Hanna-Barbera production. But essentially, though, this is about uh, Patrick Duffy's character, who is... Um, you know, one of the lost survivors of the city of Atlantis. And so he can, like, swim underwater and, like, you know, hold his breath for, like, can basically can swim underwater and, like, breathe and has, like, webbed, you know, toes and stuff like that and webbed fingers and everything. And he essentially is working with these group of these people and kind of it's like them going on kind of adventures and everything. It's just a really fun movie. I've I'd never had seen this one before. So I definitely, um, you know, look forward to, hopefully they do down the line, Blu-rays of the series as well. Because I think there was... I don't know how many episodes of this there was, but I think there might have been like either it was it was like a series or it was like some other movies or something like that I heard. They was like released some other movies of this in the past. Uh, the next ones here are from uh, Echo um, Echo Bridge Entertainment, and this is one I really like this movie. And this is the star of this one is from the show... Um, Shameless and Gotham. He plays like the Joker in Gotham. And this is, um, he's lots of different stuff. And he was in like the uh, Amityville Awakening. He looked really different in this. I didn't even know it was him at first because he has like long hair. He was like wearing long hair wig in this and like looked really, really different. But it's a movie here called Anthem of a Teenage Prophet. Uh, Peyton List is in this movie as well, as well as Juliet Lewis. And this is basically though about Karen Mohan. Mohan? I always say names wrong. Unless I heard a name, I usually say it totally wrong. But basically though, he he has this something happen where he has like this vision and he's like with his friends hanging out and stuff and he's smoking and everything 
drinking and he just like all of a sudden like kind of passes out a little bit and like says i predict that you know you're one of you is going to die tomorrow you're going to get hit by a car and he's saying all these vivid details about what's going to happen and how it's going to happen and everything and they're all like what are you talking about but then the very next day the friend is hit by a car and then the friends are like saying what how did you know all this how did you know all this stuff what you were saying is exactly right it was freaky and you knew all this stuff and they, they like tell the news about it and um it's like kind of like people are kind of looking at him really weird at school like how did you know this like what is the matter with you and like and he's getting having all kinds of grief and everything and Peyton List though plays the boyfriend of the guy that died you know and who was this guy's best friend and it's it's dealing with though this main guy who had this vision and he starts having other kind of stuff happening but then at the same time too he's having like um he starts to like Peyton List's character, but he's like kind of awkward about that because he doesn't know if he should because it's his best friend's girlfriend, you know, who died. He died, and it's really, really well done. I really like this movie. This honestly, this was honestly a really, really interesting movie that I feel like not a lot of people have seen. So, really recommend you guys check this one out. Check out the trailer for this one. If you guys have seen this one, let me know, you know, what you guys thought of that one. And next one here is from Echo Bridge uh, Entertainment as well. It's a movie here called Frenzy. This is a sense though about a group of these friends who do like YouTube videos and stuff and they want to do kind of like a crazy video of them going and like snorkeling in this area where they're not supposed to go to they like to go to kind of off-limit kind of areas and stuff like that and they think oh they'll get more views going to this area they're not supposed to go to but of course though the plane ends up crash landing down there and they're out there and of course though there's all these sharks all around them it's essentially them in this weird area, like you know, this kind of freaky area with these like cliff thing around them and everything, this reef, trying to figure out how they're gonna survive with these sharks all around and how they're gonna get away. And it's kind of them going through all this crazy intense stuff. I believe this one, because in the beginning it showed sci-fi. So I believe this one was produced originally for Sci-Fi Channel or Sci-Fi ended up airing. And I'm not 100 percent certain though, but if you guys like, you know, crazy shark movies and movies like where it's not like one shark, but it's like a whole group of sharks and stuff like that. Uh, check this one out. The next one here is from Echo Bridge as well. It's a movie here called Pimped. And this is about... um essentially though about this guy who ends up like bringing this girl back to his house. And it's like... um essentially though it's one of those things where it's like um you think it's one thing you know he's like this guy's up to something and you know he's like not a good person but then like she's also there's something up with her as well like she's kind of planning something as well so it's kind of like these two types that are kind of getting together where like one of them has a plan for what the other one but then the other one has a plan for the other person and it's kind of like an interesting kind of thing that they're going through in this house and it's kind of this crazy situation that these ones are going through i think it was actually Actually, another friend as well I cannot remember I watched this one like a week or two ago so I can't remember 100% all the details of this but I remember though the character was kind of reminding me a little bit like of like um the polite stranger character in like um the purge a little bit like that way that guy was acting kind of like that a little bit the next ones here are from screen media this is the one here called uh, what children do this is about um these two sisters getting together they haven't seen each other in a, like years they kind of you know haven't talked too much lately and the one sister is um in, like an actress and she's trying to like in you know Hollywood and she's not really very successful and she's always talking about all this and the next gig is going to be this and that, all this kind of stuff and she comes back to see her sister though who like I said she hasn't seen in a long time and the main reason they come together is because the grandmother is really sick and she's like you know in, in a coma and not doing very well so she kind of feels like they need to be there because she might pass away soon and it's kind of like the sisters are kind of clashing when they're back together and um the sister, though, is kind of like um, the one that came from Hollywood. Is kind of acting kind of crazy and like kind of you know, you know, kind of drinking and around with the old friends and stuff. And like the sister, the other sister is like, "What is going on here?" And it's essentially though them trying to kind of get along and kind of work out their own lives because the other sister has her own set of kind of problems and it's actually a really pretty well done character piece there is some really funny stuff in this one as well this one here is from screen media as well it's a movie called adult life skills this is um stars uh jody whitaker who is you know stars as the you know most recent um 
you know, Doctor Who, the, the first ever female Doctor Who. And, and this one is basically, though, about this girl who is living out in a, her, you know, mom's garden shed out there. And she's kind of like doesn't do anything. And she like makes these really weird mo like videos of like these like these, this, this, these strange movies that she's making. Like these like, I think it was like thumbs or something talking. And, and I, I think that's what it was. I can't remember 100 percent. But like it's these odd things that she's doing that no one's really seeing. And the mother is like, listen, you've got to move out. You've got to figure things out. You know, I can't have you living here anymore. You've got to go on your own. You've got to figure things out. You've got to change your look. You know, you're kind of giving up on life a little bit. And, and, it's, and it's kind of about her trying to figure out how she's going to get herself together and how she's going to figure out what she's going to do. There's also like um, some other kind of drama stuff because of, like something that happened, like a death and stuff like that that she's going through. That she, because of that, that's why she's in sort of the place that she's in. But a really pretty interesting movie movie here as well. I don't. I like this one a lot. Uh, the next ones here are from Mill Creek, and this is a um, a new one from their um, you know the Blu-rays that are in like cool throwback VHS uh, covers. I have like some bunch of ones behind me. I really love these releases. And this is the movie starring John, uh, John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd, Neighbors, which I've always loved. This movie. It's a super super underrated movie. Absolutely one. If you guys have not seen this one, is a must watch. And it's just a like, crazy crazy movie. It's about um, Dan Aykroyd's character ends up moving in uh, next door to John Belushi, and like um, he's really strange with him, his, his wife, and the wife is like hitting on John Belushi, and it's like all these kind of weird stuff is going on. This, my favorite scene in this is when he's like um, Dan Aykroyd's character is supposed to go out and get spaghetti, and like take out, and he gives them John Belushi's character gives them all this money, and then he, and he when, what he actually does instead is um, like hilarious. I don't know, I, I love this movie. It's just like he's messing around with him, uh, Dan Aykroyd's character, and kind of like making his life a nightmare uh if you guys have never seen this one definitely watch this uh the next one here is from uh mill creek as well and it's an eight movie collection called the no tell motel collection which is an eight movie set which includes vacancy identity hostel hostel 2 it's hostel and hostel 2 are both the director's cut uh terror at red roof inn it happened in nightmare inn the devil's nightmare and legacy of blood it happened in nightmare inn is one that i really liked you know i saw this one that one years back it's like these sisters running this kind of motel it's it's a really, really weird. Like I always loved like motel kind of stuff, and all these ones sort of deal with um, motel kind of settings and stuff like that. Sort of kind of stuff like that. You know, but pretty much for the most part, they do all deal with motel kind of settings. So like, all, if you guys are into like motel setting horror films. But anyway, though, guys, that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching, subscribing. I'll see you guys later. Bye.